Hey guys and gals, friends of YouTube, Loadfly Helly's here. Um, finally, I am back to building on this cadet. That's just, I've just had so much going on and my room was a wreck, my table piled up and stuff. I, I had to kind of rearrange it and I just don't have anywhere else to put any planes and stuff. I gotta, gotta quit getting them until I get my building. But anyway, um, this will be part three and we're gonna try to get this finished up. Uh, this weekend maybe I hope we'll just see how it goes I should, didn't, shouldn't have any problems um, we're fixing to mount the engine on this and uh, go from there and then do the electronics and stuff inside and then the one reason I like to do the engine at this point uh, I can't remember what the book actually shows it may have been either before this or later but I like to put it on now before I work on my electronics inside that way you got the weight up here and it keeps your nose on the table where you can get in here and work instead of it flopping up and down like that so less chance of it slipping off the table too so we're going to get the engine mounted on this section and we'll see how much time we've spent on that and then go from there so anyway uh first thing we want to do we got we've got our engine we've got a i have a os 46 ax nitro i'm going to put on this uh my friend jason that sent me this plane he's he's following me and he's almost caught up to me so he's uh He's got a 46AX2, the new version. I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe carburetor or something. It's not a whole lot. The the housing and everything, mounting housing and everything is the same. So it'll be almost the same exact engine on each plane. Um, but anyway, before I stick this on there, the first thing I like to do is put a quick connect on my throttle arm. Um, now it comes with a linkage that has a Z-band in the end of it. And you put the Z-band through here and then slide that through the tube over here and mount it up but I I don't like that I like to have an adjustment out here on both ends so I can fine-tune it so what I do is mount one of these little great planes quick connects on here and on this particular one we can do this without taking this arm off sometimes you have to undo that nut and take the arm off but I can get to it across here like that by opening the carburetor so we're gonna start with that and uh, got my little quick connect here we'll put it through that first hole it spins freely and then we'll turn it over and I've got my little handy long socket set little bitty socket set and the second one down now the set is a 764 it fits perfect in this little uh, snap lock ring or whatever I'm not sure what they call those uh, lock rings or something but anyway that fits perfect right on the end of that and then I've got my little handy dandy hammer, a little brass hammer that I bought from Harbor Freight. Jason, I, I can't remember if I, I think I sent you one of these. I can't remember for sure. I know I sent you some stuff, but anyway, it's really handy. So what we're going to do, put that right on top of that little quick connect. Get it straight there as we can, and we're going to tap it a couple times, and there we go. That's locked on. Now there's a little plastic safety catch that you can put on top of that you don't have to but I like to just for extra precaution I've never ever ever had one of these come loose so um, you know you don't have to worry about that but uh, I just really like them and I've never had one come loose but you and you want to be sure and use Loctite on the set screw that goes in here uh, if you don't then yeah you're liable to have one come loose uh, Yep, that'll fit. I'm just gonna screw that in there. Just uh, oh, it goes on the outside. Sorry, I'm trying to put it through the wire hole. I'm just gonna screw it in just a little ways so we don't lose it, and then that will be ready for the throttle linkage. And we can put that in later after we mount the engine this way without using the Z band. That's why I like to do this too, and have the adjustment. So okay, uh, we got that on the engine. We're gonna set it aside here. Now what we're going to do is uh, open up our motor mount, um, get that out, and it comes with a little set of machine bolts, block washers, and flat washers to mount it to the firewall. Um, 
get all this out of here without getting a staple in my hand. I'll pull them. I've been tearing these apart for and ripped on my finger with that little staple before, so be careful opening this stuff. All right, uh, we're going to put a flat washer on each bolt. Whoops, sorry. First, we're going to put a lock washer on each bolt, then a flat washer. We'll go ahead and get all those ready so they're laying here. We can just pick them up. Um, I am really sorry, guys. I know there's quite a few of you guys have been waiting on me, and I'm, I'm sure you've probably gone ahead and finished your plane. But, man, I, I just, I don't know. I've just had the hardest time getting back into building. I'm, I've had a lot of stuff going on this summer and spring, and work has kind of slowed down a little. <laughs> But then my grandkids, they're out of all the ball games right now, at least till a couple more months, and they'll start up again on stuff. But uh, um, I'm really sorry I've taken so long to get this done for you guys that were following this, but just uh, part of it. Um, anyway, now we'll, uh, we're will we not going to put Loctite on these at this time. All we want to do, let me get my screwdriver out here. All we want to do is snug these down at this point get them started straight you sure don't let it cross thread on you it's easy to do well, this one's trying to well that's going so crooked there it goes all right i'm gonna get my camera back up here now where you can see what i'm doing but uh we're not going to tighten it we're just going to barely Slug it like that where it'll slide because these these have a an adjustable mount hole in them where you can slide them back and forth for different size engines. All right, we'll go ahead and get this top one in on this side. And the reason we're not going to Loctite these right now is because we're going to mark our engine holes and drill the holes, and we'll take them back off to drill the holes in these. So we don't want to put Loctite on yet. Now when we do the final mount then we'll put Loctite on. Never, never not do, uh, never not Loctite any bolt that's metal to metal, uh, except it really doesn't help much on mufflers. I would rather use a lock washer. The heat deteriorates that uh, uh, Loctite and doesn't help it. it. actually can make them come loose. So I know a lot of people do use it on there, but I don't. I've never had, I've had one muffler come loose, I think, but I just use lock washers on them. And uh, some people I know are using silicone, heat silicone gasket material like you get at an automotive store. They're putting that around the threads and that helps because the heat doesn't deteriorate it. So you might, you know, you can try something like that if you want to. But as long as I've used lock washers on the mufflers, I've never had any trouble except that one time. All right. Now what we want to do is set our engine in there and squeeze it together on the motor. I'm going to try to hold this from the bottom. And you want to squeeze it square in the center of the side of the engine so it's even. Now we're going to snug these down just a little. from the top okay have to move that out of the way to tighten this one down all right we just got them snug where they won't move <coughs> excuse me um, now uh, let me get the manual now this one it's usually not real critical about uh, how far the thrust washer is out. I mean, it is in a way due to your balance, but it also, uh, this particular trainer has a cow. Most trainers don't. Well, that's the only trainer I've ever seen that has a cow, which is kind of nice. It makes it look a little nicer. Anyway, uh, we got four and a half inches from the firewall to the front of the thrust washer. This big, this big silver washer right here with the little knurled edge on it that's your thrust washer so that's what they're measuring to the front of that so um, now what I do on that um, I've got a little piece of flat stock it's uh, I believe quarter inch thick I don't know inch wide 
It don't have to be real long, but just long enough to cover your firewall. I made it this long because of bigger planes. Um, what I like to do is put that on there, and that way you can get a really accurate reading uh, on putting this together. Let's see. Get that off. And this, you don't have to just cinch this down either. You can just uh, pretty much kind of finger tighten it. Put that on there. Alright, tighten that down. Then, you can set this on there. And let me get my ruler. And it makes it really easy to measure from the firewall. To the back side of this which is the front of your thrust washer so we're gonna go four and a half inches so it needs to come forward a little too far like I said this one the, it's important to get it where it says to put it because of the cow now uh, what I'm gonna do <coughs> um, this will slide a little bit back and forth, so you want to try to get that kind of centered, not torqued to one side or the other. If anything, to the right. You want it's got built-in thrust uh, degree. All right, we're still on the mark. So let me see if I can hold this and get. I should have got my clamps out beforehand, but I didn't. Okay. See if I can clamp this without it moving. It should work. Let me get away from that hole there. All right, that should hold it pretty good. If it snaps loose, you just have to remeasure and make sure you get it back in the right spot. All right, we are dead on four and a half inches. Well, that's where we want it. Now we are going to take our handy dandy little uh, Great Plains uh, oh, I can't think what they call it so like a little center punch it's got a little drill bit uh, it's to align your holes perfectly it's got this little funnel shaped cone on the end which fits in the hole on the side of your engine and then you put pressure on it it's made to do with your hand thumb thumb drive but I have learned that it works much better much easier if you put it in a drill. Now this won't fit in my little Ryobi drill because it's chucked for the little hexagon shape. But so I got this little bit bigger one and I put it in here. Get it opened up. Alright, it doesn't have to be real tight. Let's get the battery in it so it should work. Ooh. Oh I didn't have it centered up in the chucks. There we go. There we go. Now, I'm going to take uh, this piece, or, and I'm going to hold on to it, and I'm going to put pressure with the drill bit, or the, the drill, to push the drill bit out of the end. And we're going to stick that in the hole. And I'm holding on to this to put pressure on the cone, and real straight. I want to start that hole. Doesn't take much. It's just a pilot hole. But this will get your holes dead center where your bolts will go through without any problem. Alright, now I'm going to very carefully move my clamp forward so I can get the back hole over here. Get it straight. to hold this without moving it but I, I forgot to pull this fuel line off there get that out of the way the clamp will kind of hold it back out of the way all right but I'm gonna make sure I didn't move this oh right on the money okay we'll get our front hole Now we'll very gently move the clamp forward. We 
get around behind the hose on this side. Alright, get it straight. Now, we have four perfect aligned holes, so when we drill them out on the drill press, uh, our bolts will will go in really good. Um, this is, I, I got mine at Tower Hobbies, it's made by Great Plains, and uh, like I said, I can't remember the exact name, but it's uh, something centering tool, but uh, anyway, they're about, I don't know, $12, $14, but boy, they're well worth the money um, to have, so... Okay, uh, now let me put this drill up because I'm going to use a drill press to uh, drill these holes. So uh, we'll take this off and we'll take our motor mounts back off. And now, I don't know if you can see, but you have four perfect little pilot holes. And that way your drill's not going to walk and get them off. So, okay, uh, let me get my drill press set up and get these off and, and we'll be right back okay guys we're back um, got my drill press set up uh, now your plane kit does not come with bolts to bolt the motor their engine to the motor mount it comes with bolts to bolt the motor mount bolt the motor mount to the firewall but it does not come with bolts to bolt the engine and neither does your engine so you'll have to buy those extra uh, generally what they use on this size engine is a 632 I am out of those right now, so these are slightly smaller, uh, but on this plane it's it'll be fine. Uh, on a 632, you can do it one of two ways. You can I bought this at Ace Hardware. Any of your hardware stores will have them. It's a 632 tap, and I can't remember the number of the bit that goes with it, but they'll have a chart there where if you get this, it'll tell what number of the bit to go, and you drill from the pilot hole. You drill out with this drill bit, and then you put this in a little hand handle crank and hand do it. Don't ever do this in the drill press. Do it slow. And then you can thread uh, the holes into this uh, motor mount. And I've done a lot of them like that earlier years of flying. I've never had one come loose. It's, it's almost like a lock nut through this plastic. It's hard, hard plastic. But generally what I do is thread, drill it all the way through and then I go ahead and put a lock nut and a washer on the bottom just as a safety precaution. Uh, so I've never ever had an engine vibrate loose whatsoever. Uh, on this particular one, since I don't have 632 bolts, we are not going to uh, thread this. There's no reason to because these are slightly smaller. So we're just going to run them all the way through with washers and put uh, a lock nut on the bottom where it comes out and that way it won't it won't come loose either so I keep a lot of these little two by two blocks laying around you can see I've about used this one up it makes it real handy to lay your motor mount on keeps it level be careful doing this do not get any clothing or anything hung up in this get it kind of centered before you turn it on and then keep your fingers back away from this drill bit so all right here we go Okay, now we have perfectly square holes, or straight, you know, uh, 90 degree all through there. Um, not all of you will have a little drill press, and that's okay. It works better with a drill press, but if you do it with a hand drill, you got to really be careful and look as you're doing it and make sure you've got your drill bit straight. If, if you get it off a little bit, then the bolts will thread in there crooked and it puts extra torque on them and can cause them to break off. So if, if you have any access to a little drill press at all, uh, if you're going to do very much building, you can get a little cheap one like this for, you know, probably under 70, 80 bucks. But it's just a little cheap Craftsman. It's plastic. It's not anything precision, but it works great for this stuff. So um, let me get the other ones drilled out. Okay, there we go. We'll get our shrapnel off of here. Put my board 
back up in the drawer. And, uh, unplug our drill press. I'm going to take my chuck and take this drill bit out. I keep a whole bunch of them up here in the top of this. Um, and then just wrap my cord up to store it. But a little little bitty bench top drill press like this is really heavy if you're planning on building quite a few planes in the future. Uh, it really helps to have this. So let's set this over here out of the way. Now you want to be sure and get all your little plastic shrapnel out of the way because if you lay your plane on that, believe it or not, the little bitty piece of that can make a big old hole or a dent in your covering. So keep your towel or whatever you're working on, foam or something really clean where you're laying your fuselage and stuff and your wings. So, okay, uh, now we are ready to put these on here permanent. So we're going to get the Loctite out and uh, let's see, get the right screws here. Now I'm going to put Loctite on this first one. Get it started. Okay. Now, these next ones, I will just put the Loctite on it as I put them through here. Put a pretty good little wad on there. You do not want these working loose on you at all. As long as you Loctite them good, you'll they'll never come loose on you. Uh, another good piece of advice. The blue Loctite is a medium hole, the red is solid. I've seen people, well, I'm going to use red, you know. I'm not ever going to take that off. Well, that's uh, not entirely true. Sometimes if you, okay, you crash this airplane and destroy it, you want to get your motor mount off, keep it, then it's hard to get those off. It'll usually break the screw before it'll break loose. So don't ever use red on anything that you remotely might have a chance of taking back off. Use the blue and it holds just fine. Uh, you can get blue Loctite. Your hobby shops have it. But you can also get it at uh, any automotive store, a hardware store. I get mine at Harbor Freight. It's a lot cheaper. Not not knocking the hobby stores. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be in this hobby. But they are very high on a lot of stuff. So things like this, you can get it usually a little hardware store or something a little cheaper. Uh, Harbor Freight is an excellent place to get stuff like this. Heat shrink, things like that. Uh, and we are fortunate enough I have one about 15 miles from where I work so I can go by there after work anytime and get what I need all right now we're going to take I've got a big drill bit in here and I'm just gonna run them up with this a little bit don't use this to try to tighten them down I'm just running them up so I don't have to crank so much with my hand Now, now we want to put our, well, we can take this board off here for one thing at this point. Let's get it out of the way. We don't need it anymore. Okay, let's place her back on there for my nose cone, or prop, or whatever it went for. All right, we'll put our nut stuff back on there so we don't lose it. Keep it all together. Um, now, we're going to set this on here. We're going to, matter of fact, we can put the screws down through it, at least a couple of them, to kind of hold this in place. We don't have to put the nuts on them just yet. Now, we want to squeeze this motor mount in, get it square. And then now I'm going to I got it a little too snug, but anyway, there we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to cinch these bottom ones down just a little bit. Okay, now, I'll get these off, and we'll tighten them on down. Snug them pretty, pretty good. Don't break them off, but you want them good and tight. If you use too big of a screwdriver, you can twist them off real easy. You can feel them starting to get really tight. That Loctite's going to harden up on there, and it ain't going to let it come loose. So,
Okay. All right. Now we're ready to set our engine back on there. Um. Wow. I need some more flat washers to go on the bottom of this. You know what? I'm gonna take since this is metal on top. I'm gonna take that off and just put uh, put the screw through there. You don't don't need a washer really. Okay, get in there. Oh, got a piece of shrapnel in my way on that hole. Let me get my knife and get it out of the way. and pick that up here in a minute see how perfect my holes are they just the bolts just go right straight through now I'm probably gonna have to take this fuel line off and get it out of the way so we don't tear a hole in it okay now I gotta get this one off get the washer up under it put it back okay at this point uh, it might be kind of easier to turn your plane Sort of on its side, like that. Put your washer on there, flat washer. You do not need a lock washer because it's lock nuts. Right, let's get all four of these started. Washer on there. I would have rather had 632, but these are fine on this small of an engine. It's not gonna hurt anything. And sometimes I even use 832, especially like you going up to a 60 size engine. I use 832s. I usually buy them by the bulk and have a whole drawer full, but apparently I've used them all up and did not replenish my stock yet. So, all right. Okay, let me get some tools out right quick and I'll be right back. Okay, yeah. Uh, Gathered up my tools. I had had them using them in there and I wasn't in my drawer so I had to go get them. But anyway, <clears throat> a little cheap socket set. Don't have to be expensive, just a little small one like this. Uh, is really handy to have. And also I bought a set of long uh, deep sockets, SAE and a set of metric. Because sometimes you got big long bolts sticking out and you can't screw it all the way down. So these are really handy. Uh, to, I keep a set in my field box too. Tighten. Got a little screwdriver over here. Alright. I can tighten it down with the screwdriver most of the way. Well, it's really wanting to. Well, this is kind of hard. That's, I like a, the Allen head uh, bolts. Really, these are little screwdriver flatheads, but I like the Allen heads because they're a lot easier to hold. It doesn't slip out like a screwdriver will. Once we get this first one kind of cinched up, it won't be quite as bad. Ah, oh, come on. Goodness gracious. Okay, we got that kind of cinched down. Um, <clears throat> you know what? Let me try something here. Got a set of these little bits too, and if I'm not mistaken, no, it won't. I was thinking it would fit in there, but it won't. Okay, we don't need those. Uh, another handy little set of tools. I got these at Harbor Freight, oh, like five bucks. They're long. Uh, screwdrivers and they go in either your drill or uh, also have this little t-handle that's reversible and they fit in so there's a lot of times you'll need to get down in a deep hole or inside the fuselage where you need a long bit so these are really handy too you just can't have enough handy tools when you're building <coughs> okay i tell you what I'm going to do let me get a little screwdriver tip out Make sure it fits my screw head because I don't want to strip it. It's a little too big. Let's go with this smaller one. Um, and then I have 
an extension over here. I've got a three pack. There's different, three different links. Those are also real handy to have. Now, I'm going to put my socket on here. Get our screw lined up. Just run those up like that. It's a lot quicker. Get my and then we'll tighten them on down by hand. Come on. Well, this one's a little harder to get to. All right, it's snugged up. Okay, that was a little quicker, a little easier. I might put this stuff up. I try to keep stuff kind of put up as I go when I can. Now we're just going to use a regular screwdriver and just to hold it with, and we're going to tighten these down again. Be careful. Do not twist them off. Just good and snug. The the lock washer will keep it from coming loose. I mean the lock nut, I'm sorry, will keep it from coming loose. I think this side I can turn it over. Um, here's one thing you want to be careful of too. Uh, I need to show you. On the muffler side of the engine, be real careful using it like a long bit. I got a little bitty nick right there. Um, but be careful when you're using a drill or anything against here. Because that will spin and damage the smooth surface and cause your muffler to leak. Now you can buy uh, gaskets for this. I don't use them all that much because I've never had any trouble with them. But I do have some if you did nick it up a little bit. But be real careful on this muffler side so you don't scar that up real bad. Alright, let me get my screwdriver up here. Tighten those down. Goodness. Hard to hang on to. Okay. There we go. We have an engine mounted, pretty much. Of course, we still got to put the throttle linkage in and uh, mount the muffler on it, but we won't do the muffler until we, we have to cut the cowl out on this. So. That might be a little bit of a challenge on this one. We'll see how it goes. Um, Alright, let me get this stuff put up. Put my socket set up. Try to keep your bench from getting so cluttered up with too many tools out at one time. You'll, you'll lay your fuselage down on something and damage it. Now, here's one thing you don't want to forget at this point. Oh, excuse me. At this point, we'll put the fuel line back on this piece here and put it on the remote fuel valve back here make sure it's all the way up on there and then put the other end on the carburetor that, that way it's there and you're not going to forget about it Okay. alright there we go we got that mounted um, now we uh, can go ahead and put the linkage in here let me find it got here well I uh, was wrong I, I said that generally they put a z-bend in here in the linkage for the throttle uh, they did not on this kit which I prefer not to anyway I usually cut it off but then what I do see that way you can just stick it right through there Let me open my nut up a little bit I put it right through the throttle tube and we will temporarily tighten this down for now. No Loctite on it at this point. I mean, we could, but we we may need to move it out of the way when I put our servo in. So we're gonna tighten it down just snug so we don't lose anything. Uh, now, we don't wanna forget to do Loctite in this and everything before we put the cowl on permanent. So this other linkage will go to the steering. And Jason, <laughs> here I just, I just pulled one. I realized I forgot to put my quick connect on here so uh, 
I'm gonna have to do that. Let me get one out. Get all the little pieces parts for it. And a nut or a bolt. Okay. Now uh, I'm gonna put this from the top. I have a little bit more play in the way the the tube will move up and down. I want lined up a little better with that, so I'm gonna put this on top of this. Hopefully it will fit. I may have to drill out this hole. Yeah, it's really, really tight. So you don't want that binding on your servo, so I'm gonna take it out. And we're gonna get a drill bit. See what we got here. You can just do this by hand. You don't even have to put your drill. This, this, let me see if this one's gonna work. No, nope, need to go one size bigger. We don't want to get it too big because we don't want too much slack in our hole. But this, this plastic, you can usually just thread that through just like that by hand. You don't even have to put your drill. If you do have to drill it with a drill, be sure and put a board behind it to keep it from flexing on you. Now, there, that fits. That's a little bit of slack, but not much. Um, I'm going to take a razor knife, and I'm going to shave down the little flash that's sticking up there on both sides so that sits level. Okay, there we go. All right, we're going to put that through here. Now, what i got to do... I don't know if my 2 by 2 is going to fit. Ooh, it's going to be a little big. Maybe I can... Yeah, I might be able to make it work. I need three hands, though. That's going to be the problem. All right, what do I do? <laughs> we'll see if I can hold that and hit it. This may be a problem here. I may have to go and enlist the help of my wife. Maybe not. Let me see here. I'm almost there. It needs to go down just a hair more. I'm going to pry that up and put some where I can get some pressure on it. Okay. I could just get a hair more. Alright, that's pretty tight. Now we'll put the little plastic cap on it and you can take a pair of needle nose. Sometimes they'll snap with your fingers. Snap that down on there really good. Alright, good and snug. There we go. Now, let's put our uh, nut in there temporarily so we don't lose it. Okay, alright. I should have done that before I ever mounted this. I just forgot it. So anyway, it can be done after it's on, but it makes it a little harder. So, we got that in place. Um... You can, if you want to at this point, go ahead and put this through. But you might want to kind of pull it up out of your way when you get ready to do your servo. Yeah, it's not going to be in the way too much. We'll go ahead and put it on here. Kind of keep track of it that way. But we will come back and retighten all this with Loctite. So it's just temporary for right now. Okay. All right, we've got that in place. We are not going to worry about our cowl probably till the last. We are going to, um, from this point, uh, first thing we'll do now is mount our fuel tank in here. And let me get that out. Okay.
Alright. Get all this stuff opened up. There again, be careful. Them little staples will they'll really get you. Hang one in your finger. Okay, there's all of our hardware for the fuel tank. Make sure there's no dust in it. Now, you're going to need a pair of tweezers. Because inside here is the clunk line. So we've got to get a hold of that and pull it out. Now, uh, this is going to have a cowl over it. Generally on a trainer, your engine stays open like this and you can get to your fuel lines real easy. Since this one is going to be in a cowl, we're going to have to put three lines for a, a fill line. Uh, so we'll put, absolute, actually we'll end up putting two clunks in it is what we'll do. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the end of that so I don't lose it. It's clear tubing so it'll be easy to lose track of it. Um, let me see. I got, I know I've got more clunks. I got a whole drawer full of fuel line and assembly stuff here so um, actually what I'm going to put on the carburetor line I'm going to put an in in the tank filter so I'm going to use that on that line so that that serves as a clunk and anyway I do have another clunk uh, if you don't do that you, you definitely need to put a fuel filter uh, in line somewhere out here to keep debris and stuff from coming out of the tank your tank will get stuff in it from Sometimes the rubber start, stopper starts to deteriorate or can get out of your tank, something in your pump. So always use a fuel filter if you want your engine to stay running good. I normally use these little kind right here on the little nitro engines. And then I use this Sullivan uh, double screen one on my gas engines. You can use these on nitro too. But uh, Okay, now let me see here. Might be enough. No, there won't be enough fuel line. I don't need that filter. I'm trying to see if I have some just basic filter. I mean line, because I don't want to use up my green and stuff. Uh, oh well, that's alright. i got plenty of it. i got green and orange. And what I usually do, we'll use the green for the carburetor line. And orange for the uh, muffler. And then the blue or clear for the fill line. And orange indicating hot green go for gas that's kind of my theory so that's what I usually do uh, when I'm putting my fuel tank together all right let me put that back up I'm trying to keep my mess down okay all right let me uh, let me get all this opened up here and then I'll come right back okay got all of our stuff out here um, You've got your fuel tank, you've got three pieces of aluminum tubing that it comes with. Uh, you've got the part that goes on the back of the stopper and the part that goes on the front. Now your stopper will come with two holes all the way through it. Generally on a trainer that's all you'd use is two holes, a fill and a vent. But on this one since it's got a cowl around the engine it's going to be harder to get to the fuel lines. Uh, we are going to poke the third hole. Now if you look at the back side it's got the third hole there. And what you do is take a piece of the tubing and push that through there <clears throat> like that. Okay? Now, this is the way I set mine up. You guys uh, can do however you want to. Now, let, let me get that out of there. <laughs> But I, I like to do mine this way because I know exactly uh, which line is which. So I'm going to take this long piece. I'm going to put it in the top center hole to the top. Okay. I don't need quite that much sticking out. All right. Then the other two doesn't really matter which one they go in. Uh, and what I do on this, as you're looking at the front of the plane, I put my carburetor line on the bottom right and my vent, or I'm sorry, my fill line on the bottom left. 
That way I always know which line, if you're using the same color line, which most planes you, a lot of people do, I've got to where I use the colored line too, so it wouldn't matter quite as much. But I, I, every one of my planes are set up the same way, so I can just at a quick glance know exactly which line's which if I have to work on one at the field or something. So I put, uh, I'm going to put the little short one in over here for the carburetor line. We'll push it through there. Just leave about an even amount as the other one sticking out on the front. Now we're going to put this one through for the fill line. And generally, you're, on a trainer, your vent line will be the, the fill. But this one has a cowl on it, so we're going to use a three line deal here. Put these in a little bit farther. Okay, now, the, the long one is your vent, two at the bottom is your fill and your uh, carb line. What we're going to do, you want to bend this vent line up towards up toward the top of the tank. So, before we do that, we want to stick this back piece on here. We want to get these tubes through that fitting and then take a pair of pliers and very gently try not to kink it just kind of work your way back on it like that and bend it. Now I've got an actual tube bender that I use you know when it's not in here but like this on the vent it's okay just to to use this you get a few little creases in it but it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, now what you want to do is hold that in line to where it's going to fit and you want that up as close to the top of the tank as you can but you don't want it to pull up against the top of the tank to cause a suction. Now some people put a clear piece of tubing on the end of it. Some of mine are like that, some of them aren't. Now before you stick that in there we're going to put this on the front side and we're going to start the screw through here. Put a little pressure on it, push it and get it started and it'll thread through there. And then when it comes out the back, it should catch on the threads on your little metal plate. The hair there. Alright, we're going to screw this on down where it's just kind of up against the rubber there. That's all we want. We want this staying straight up. Now, what we'll do, you have to kind of turn this at an angle. Well, we're about to forget something. All right, the filter goes on the carb line. That would be my bottom right as I'm looking at the front of the plane. And the way I do it, doesn't really matter however you want to set yours up. The vent, the only thing that really matters is the vent line always needs to be on top. Now, what we want to do is see, okay, we're going to be too long, see, so I need to cut off about that much. All right, let's put it back on there. You want the clunk as close to the back of the tank as you can get it so it picks up all the fuel right to the very end. There we, there we go. That should lay just about right there on the inside of the tank uh, back here. So we'll take a look at it. All right, now this clunk we know needs to be about the same, so we're going to cut a little bit of it off. And you want this one to the back, so when you drain it with your pump, this is the fill line and the drain line, that it will get all the fuel out of that tank. You don't want to, like a lot of my planes, some of them will set for months at a time before I fly them. So uh, I don't, I want to get everything I can out of it so it doesn't kind of jello in there, and it will after a while. All right, what we're going to do now, we got you can mark the top of your tank. This one has the the print on it, so I know, but I always sometimes I'll put a T on it for the top. That way you always get it in there the right direction with a Sharpie mark. Okay, my camera uh, quit on me there, so I'm not sure where it, so we're going to kind of start again on this section. Uh, I've got the lines and everything put on. Now we're going to drop the clunks down in here. I've marked the top of my tank with a Sharpie. Uh, now you kind of just kind of bend that sideways and get it started and then um, push your stopper up in there. Now you want you want these lines 
squared up with the top. You don't want them twisted sideways. You want that vent up toward the top. Now I can take this and look at a light. I can look through this toward the light and I can see right where that vent is. It's probably a eighth inch from the top so that's fine. Uh, and then these two here, the clunks are, oh, you probably can't see them from the light but they're they're just uh, eighth inch or so from the back of the tank so that's what we want. Okay now at this point you want to keep this from turning on you but you want to tighten it down. This you want to be really careful with. Uh, these, these little screws and back plates are real easy to strip out so I like to snug it down and then use a little bit smaller diameter screwdriver because the bigger handle ones you're going to get more torque on it and you won't realize how much torque you're putting. You, you want this tight. Well, that one ain't going to be big enough. Let me see. I'll try this little bitty one here. You want this nice and tight. You don't want any air leaks. But you also don't want to twist off the threads in there. You can kind of see the rubber stopper starting to push and squish out. And that's what you want. I'm afraid to go any farther. Went one more half turn. But I don't want to twist that and strip that off back there. They are real easy to strip. So anyway, that worked fine there. We've got our tank all assembled and ready to go. Now what we want to do, we're going to put the green line on the carb. We're going to put the orange line. Let me cut that off square. We're going to put the orange line on the vent. Put it on the top. And we're going to put the clear blue that came with it for the fill line. So, and then what we'll do is we will feed these through here. We're going to bring them all out the top except for the fill. I can get my camera over here. We can see what I'm doing. I'll run these through the hole. We're going to pull that through now until we get to where the fill is. Okay, pull that on out. Now, let me get that untwisted. We don't want it between those other lines. This will go at the bottom. And you, you want to start out with them on purpose, uh, too big. Now, what I'm going to do is pull this back up. I'm going to put the fuel tank back in here first and then pull these forward. And then your stopper and everything will fit right in that little hole uh, on the front of the firewall. Now, um, one thing I forgot to do, but I think I can put it in from behind, there's a block of wood that comes with it. Um, also, one thing, I may want to put some padding under this. I'm going to pull this back out for a minute, at least part of the way, and I'm going to put some foam under here. Uh, to help cushion that and keep some of the vibration down. Let me get a piece of that and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, uh, I've got these little pieces of foam. What these actually are, are uh, insulators that go around plug-in light switches on the wall, but we got a bunch of them in a yard sale or something, and they work great for this, so I'm just using a piece of that. But what I am going to do is, so it doesn't move, I'm going to cut myself two pieces of this. I'm going to stick it on the bottom. And this is double sided. It really sticks hard. So once you get it where you want it, you better get it there the first time because it's not easy to get off. Um, get a knife over here. Alright, now we'll pull the covering off the back side. Kind of hard to get started, but once you get it going, it'll peel off pretty good. Okay. This double-sided gray sticky stuff will also serve as a little more cushion on the bottom of this. But I don't like that tank just sitting on raw wood. It, it'll vibrate. It can vibrate and rub a hole in it. And more vibration you get, the more air bubbles you get in it. Um, now, I don't know if you'll be able, you probably won't be able to see in here when I do this, but I'm going to put it in there and stick it on that platform. Where the tank's gonna go. Okay, also in here, don't know if you can see it, but there's two slots right here on either side, one here and one over here. Uh, this will take a little doing with some tweezers, but I'm putting a piece of uh, 
hook and loop Velcro. You can buy this at uh, different colors. Uh, Walmart has it. Most hardware stores, Lowe's and stuff have it. And hook and loop means that it has the fuzzy on one side and the loop on the other. And that way just one piece. Uh, some kits come with a double. It'll have a fuzzy side and a uh, loop side and you have to put them together. But I like the one piece kind. So what I'm going to do is run that down through there. Now here's the fun part. You got to get out of there with a pair of tweezers and try to get it up through this next hole. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Oh, oh, I got it. Oh, it came out. I had it the first time I let it come out. Come on, baby. Let me see here. I can get it turned just right. Well, this is going to take me a minute, so I'm actually going to turn the camera off while I'm doing it, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I have two pair of tweezers. You can't have enough tweezers. I got two like this. I got two straight. No, anyway, I took these, took one piece, fed it up through the hole, and grabbed a hold of it with the other one. So it wasn't wasn't hard at all to get in there. Now, there's a piece of wood that comes with this. Uh, what you want to do? Let me see if I can get this around here where you can see. Hopefully. Um, it goes below this double thickness here. Just get it, get it started. Get it squared up, and then just slowly push it back till ah, I got it. Keep pressure, keep it lined up square against the sides. It won't slip out on you. Now. What that's going to do is going to go against the back of the tank. Okay, we want to get our hook and loop out of the way now, if possible. And sometimes you might have to tape this out of the way. I think I can hold it here. Get the top of my tank started. Back there. Get my fill line back down in there. Get the kinks out of our other lines. There we go. Okay, now let's push all that forward. Now what we're going to do is put the hook and loop down. Cinch that so that holds the back of the tank. Okay, if you can, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but the tank is sloped slightly down in the very back. You want that. So when the plane's flying level, well, the, the fuel goes down real low, it, it goes to the bottom and that way your clunks will pick up everything so now we're going to take that little board and we're going to push it back up against the back of the tank nice and snug and then we're going to take thin CA and drop it down around each side of that to glue it in place and that way your tanks nice and solid it's not going to slide backwards or move or anything so anyway uh, let me, I'll be back in just a minute alright now we've got that all mounted I've glued my board we, the green one goes to the end, so we're going to leave ourselves plenty of slack here. Cut that off. Our filter is in the tank, so we don't need a fuel filter. It will go on top of your remote needle valve. The vent type tube, we're going to leave a little extra, not knowing exactly how long it'll be. Probably won't need near that much, but we're going to leave a little bit there so when we put the muffler on, and we can do it. And we got our fill line hanging out the bottom, and we'll put a, a little fuel dot in that to plug it up. And I may run it through the side of the cowl over here we'll see how we get to when we get to the cow so anyway there you go guys we'll end that for segment three uh, this is uh, all done mounted the engine is all mounted up and the fuel tank is ready fuel lines are hooked up except for the vent because we don't have the muffler on it yet uh, anyway that's ready to go so We'll be back for section four and we'll start putting the servos and electronics and stuff in this and hooking up the linkage to the tail feathers and uh, well we're getting close we won't be far from being done all right thanks for watching